I mean, most of the suite is already written. The way I went about it is I took sounds. I took sounds from the places that we were. So, specifically with San Jose Trinidad. You can't think about San Jose Trinidad without thinking about Paran. Or, or as we know in Venezuelan folk music, or the San Jose Serenaders. Or that 6 8 waltz such type thing. And so that's a sound in in that movement of the street. Also, with respect to the Carinias, there's not much that we know about their music. Um, and I just remember Cristo telling me that the sounds were they made music to to mimic the sound of the earth, and they made dances to mimic the moves of the animals. And so, with the Carinia part specifically, I set it up with. The sounds of the earth, sounds of Trinidad, sounds of Ayiri. I had to use a little bit of imagination in a sense. So I took that same, that same almost waltz type sound, but I waltz the waltz in a sense. With Costa Rica, with the with the Baruca, we I mean I, there were so many grooves that we heard, um, and they, I mean just the drum that they use in the the juego de los diablitos. I have one of those drums, and the way they play the little recorder, I have three different modes that I've come up just based on. So I use that to create create a, a sound palette that we can then do our own Diablitos from it. And then, of course, the Night of the Vigil, there was a very set groove, there was a very set style of singing. So I used the, basically the intervals that the singers were using, that shape of motion to form the melody between the trumpet and the saxophone. And then I, I set up almost like, a, almost like a dark theme, because they're getting ready to go and fight, and they know that it's going to be a tough war. So I set, I set up a theme like that musically. And then with Kawita, Kawita is happy people. That is happy life. That is good life, you know. Nothing better than a town on a Sunday morning early and there's nothing going on on the street. There's nobody to be found. That's a sign of happy people. Um, and so, Kawita is a calypso, because that's what they play. And then with Limon, it's about the toil and struggle of the railroad. You know, a lot of people don't know that Marcus Garvey started his, his career in Limon. He worked in the banana fields. And so there's naturally that sense of it's an underlying sense of resistance to any type of bad treatment going on. So that that's how that's how. And then with, with San Jose, California, the Moekma, I heard a I heard an old chant, an old Moekma song. So that helped me to pick a key. Um, and then I, from spending time with Rosemary, I was able to get a feeling of what she is like. And so it's really about her regality and how the generations of their people have moved around. And so we move around a bunch of different keys and different, so it's, really, it's a really nomadic piece in a sense. When you think about the 60s, you're thinking about revolution. So I got to meet with Dr. Harry Edwards. He was the, the mind behind the, the resistance at San Jose State that led to the desegregation on campus. And then he also formed the Olympic Project for Human Rights. And with that, the movement went worldwide. The piece is becoming, it goes from completely acoustic with earth instruments, eventually we get electric. Gold Rush 2.0 is the last thing I have to write. I'm writing music that speaks to history because if you don't know the history, what do you know? I think now is our job to, to have documents that in many different ways portray the history of the Americas as they pertain to being, quote unquote, the new world. And I think the more ways that you have to tell a story, the more people who can understand the story.